All right. How do I start? She said it's none of my business, but it breaks my heart. Dropped a dozen cheap roses in my shopping cart. I made it out to the truck without breaking down. I guess everybody knows you in a speed trap town. I have a confession to make. After a lifetime of staunch close mindedness for all things country music. Uh, and maybe it's after I started driving a pickup truck. I don't know. Something happened. I might have already been in my 50s before I discovered the poetry of country music lyrics. And like, it's not just some of them. Most of them. Uh, the most underrated thing about country music is its lyrics. People don't even understand how beautiful the singer songwriters and how adept and good. And uh, I have a bachelor of arts in English literature. I studied poetry. I, I also had kind of a minor in creative writing, uh, you know, and I've memorized from the greats, from Shakespeare to William Butler Yeats, Irish poets, all this stuff. But the modern, what people say, well, that's not even a real country, you know, the pop country, whatever. When I heard Jason Isbell, I think is his name. I don't know any of these country singers because, again, I spent my whole life being uh, pretty close-minded about... Uh, <laughs> country music so I don't know any of these people when I heard his version of or his song uh, Speed Trap Town the lyrics alone made me made me cry you know he understood and spoke beautifully of the experience of people like me who grew up in small town rural Minnesota which so much of this country music is kind of based on the, the aesthetic is like, I don't, I never, I heard, I think I heard 10 seconds and thought it was awesome. Recently, there's a big outcry of a song called try that in a small town or whatever. They're like, Hey, that's racist. I'm like, what? <laughs> Sick, come here and say that. Uh, you don't get to call people racist in small towns without getting a, your ass kicked <laughs> you know that's that's the that's the whole point but uh you know i found in my middle age i love hearing about my experience you know i was never a redneck but i grew up with rednecks i understand their uh culture <laughs> but uh yeah so I felt like I needed to uh, get that off my chest. Country music, it's not all bad. Laporte, Nindunjaba. Nindunjaba. Laporte is where I'm from. Laporte is a small town on the, they call it a border town. It borders the Leech Lake Indian Reservation. It's a... Uh, Population is like 114 to 130 and, you know, fluctuates. When I graduated, I think it was 114, period. Not 114,000, 114 people. I went to Head Start, kindergarten, first, second, all the way through 12th grade at the Laporte School. I am a product of the Laporte Independent School District number whatever, the Laporte Wildcats educational experience. You know, they were the ones who taught me 
my math skills. I've, I've pretty decent basic multiplication and adding abilities. I can do it in my head. I never had algebra. Um, <laughs> whatever. Taught myself how to read. Don't you love that when team in schools, you know, I saw this like one thing, it was at a school. It was a sign or something said, if you can read this, thank a teacher. I was like, what? No. So you think I, I couldn't read and I came to school and a teacher sat me down and said, this is the letter A, A is for Apple. Ah, uh, I mean, yeah, they walk you through that, but you learn how to read on your own. You know, unless you have a terrible mom, your mom reads to you when you're a little kid from Dr. Seuss, where the wild things are. There's pictures and you hear somebody reading the words. Pretty soon you memorize the words, looking at the words. And you start reading Charlie Brown and simple things and you figure out, yeah, you know, I guess somewhere along the line, somebody probably told you, yeah, C-H is ch, you know. But people, teachers don't teach kids how to read. You know, if your kid doesn't know how to read when they go to school, you know, they, they call the authorities. <laughs> like, I think there's neglect going on at home. This kid doesn't know how to, you know, it's like not, it's like not being, you know, if you can use the bathroom, thank a teacher. Like, no, the teacher didn't teach me how to, Go to use a toilet. I don't remember how I learned that, <laughs> but I figured it out somewhere. I wasn't a teacher. But what did teachers teach me? Uh, to distrust authority. That was one thing. My uh, school experience was a lot like a, uh, a Pink Floyd music video in a way. I mean, we didn't have to wear uh, uniforms like in England, but the teachers did take any opportunity to, uh, you know, belittle and degrade us. How's that go? When we grew up and went to school, there were certain teachers who would hurt the children any way they could by pouring their derision upon anything we did, exposing every weakness, however carefully hidden by the kids. But in the town, it was well known when they went home at night, their fat and psychopathic wives would thrash them within inches of their lives. Ah, ah, Education, bum, 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 bum. Good baseline, bum, 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 bum. But yeah, I, I, you know, I was a kid when uh, the wall came out, and so all those lyrics resonated with me. I think I was a seventh grader when it came out. You know, and hearing somebody scream, "Hey, teacher!" Leave them kids alone. I was like, yeah, man, thank you. <laughs> These teachers are beating us up. And their parents condone that kind of brutalizing, you know. Whatever. All in all, you were all just bricks in the wall. All in all. And this has been Quitting Weed number 21 by Michael Lyons. That's me. To learn more about quitting weed, start smoking weed and then quit it. 
you'll be surprised how much you can learn. <laughs> Thanks for uh, listening. Miigwech, kabizan dawiyeg. And I will see you again. Gigawabamin, minawa. Okay, hey, Buju! Buju! Welcome to Buju Nana Buju. I am Nana Buju. And I am Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd like to invite you to join the what Buju Crew membership channel. For four ninety nine monthly, you get exclusive perks, I've got exclusive no members only know. live stream. <laughs> Auntie Tasha's moment of wisdom, huh, sweetie? That's right. <laughs> and today, uh, candid behind the scenes discussions with creator Mike the Lions. And uh, new music videos, dead celebrity interviews from heaven, what have you. <laughs> and of course, cat videos of Bagheera. <laughs> Click the link below. Join the Buju Crew membership channel. It's $4.99 a month. We'll see you there. <laughs> and I will see you again. Kiga Wabba Min. 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 So it goes, or so they say. Times like a mountain escape. I don't know, but I can't complain. Everybody knows I've got my own <laughs>